Hi, I'm Vivian Le Guin, author of Truly Teach Me Tarot, and I'd like you well to welcome you back to the next class in this series of videos focusing on making connections and finding links between tarot cards when they appear in a spread. Um, following on from the system we've been using in the previous videos, we're going to be taking the top card and the base card and working with them individually and then trying to make connections uh, between them, find the links, find the threads that will, will you know, create the storylines. Again, we're working with an imaginary querent, imaginary questions. We're not sticking with any particular theme of a question. We're going to try and just use our imaginations and look at as many different areas as we can where we might find that these two cards have something to tell us um, and they have connections in some form or other or else they can contradict each other. And that in itself, again, has meaning too. So we're going to kick off now and we're going to take the top card. Again, I'm using the giant rider weight so that for clarity and the imagery, uh, which, so the top card we have is the seven of pentacles. And the base card this time is going to be the fool. So I just line those two cards up and I hope you can see them there. Seven of Pentacles and the Fool. So I'm going to put these aside now. So that's what we're working with in this class. Um, and I don't know about you, but I can see uh, a very strong connection coming through here. There is, there's a storyline coming, but it, it, the cards in themselves are almost contradictory. So we're going to look at the Seven of Pentacles first. And we see the Pentacles, we're dealing with um, the Suit of Pentacles, which is governed by the element of Earth. So these are the, the hard workers, the grafters, the ones who you can rely on and depend on to get the job done. They're the ones who do the tedious tasks. And, you know, you know the, the Seven of Pentacles especially is often associated with the card for the workaholic. Uh, that is just grinding work that you never stop. And then sometimes it's a case of working just for the sake of working. There's, you know, there's always something to be done. You can never switch off. You can never, uh, you know, clock off. Um, and there's a, there's also, um, it can be workaholic, but it's also a sense of just, it is your life. Your work is your life. There's nothing else you do. Um, it, you know, the Seven of Pentacles, uh, we see this guy out in a field and he's been, these are all his, 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 his crops that he's been working on, his harvest. He's been diligently nurturing them and cultivating them for God knows how long. And we have to admire what he's done because it's backbreaking work. He's put in the hours, he's put in the years, he's put in, the, you know, it's, he's all the qualifications he needed to, uh, he's skilled, he's talented, he knows what he's about. Um, but it's been a hard old journey and it's, you know, it's taken an awful lot of effort to get there. So we see him now that in the Seven of Pentacles, often a sense of you're close to um, cashing in on the, the fruits of your labour, of getting the reward for all the hard work and the energy expended. Uh, you're very, very close with, but there is a danger here of um, impatience can set in here where you think, oh gosh, I don't want to do this any longer. So you've got there's a risk that you might undo all the good you did over over the time, over the years, over the length of a project, anything by making a hasty move that you want. You really want to bring this kind of task and toil to an end. But you've got to be careful. You've got to be patient. You're in the final run now. So, so don't make any silly moves. Don't do anything stupid. But we see this guy and he's he's been working in the field all day. He's grown all these. He's he's another one to dig up um, and put with the rest. Um, it could be potatoes. <laughs> uh, it could be anything. But this is his uh, accumulation of all his efforts to date. And with the pentacles, we're, you know, we're looking at um, material gain, material wealth. So this could be his money, his assets in the bank that are growing. Um, he's been squirreling money away every month. He's, this could be his savings. Uh, and, you know, he works very hard, but he always makes sure to put something away for his rainy day money. But we see him now, he's Maybe he's been for a long period of time just grinding, just going in, doing the same thing constantly. But he's taken a break. He's taken a little break. It might be just literally a coffee break or a lunch break, a week off, um, or he's taking the weekend off. But he's stopping for a moment and he's resting on his hoe and he's just contemplating what he's done so far, what he's achieved. Because sometimes when we're just working endlessly and working to pay bills and keep the roof overhead, 
we lose sight of what we're doing. We, we don't, you know, question how happy we are or is this taking us in the direction we want to sometimes. We, we can't afford to think like that, that, you know, that's inevitable, it's work and that's what you have to do. But he's actually giving it some thought and contemplate. He's taking a little breather and maybe he's acknowledging himself that he's tired, um, that uh, it is a lot of hard work. And, you know, we're only seeing a section of the field here. Maybe he's an awful lot more. Maybe he's only started and he knows he's got to go through the rest and he's got a lot more physical hard work to do. So he's trying to pace himself a little bit by taking a break, which the Pentacles generally don't take many breaks. They kind of will work through their coffee breaks, their lunch breaks. They work late at night, overtime. They work weekends. Um, they will even, you know, may forsake holidays um, in favour of getting that bit of extra overtime, um, getting a project out on time. They, they like to meet their deadlines um, and they're, they're the guys that will, you know, when everybody else, they'll be the last ones in the office, okay? When everybody else has gone home, they'll still be there and they'll be the first in in the morning as well. So we see him there taking his little break and giving thought to what's going on. Now, we have a look at the fool here and we see a very different scenario um, this guy may have clocked into work and he'll clock out late in the day and he knows that he's going to be there for God knows how many hours and how many more hours he has to put in as well uh, to get the job done. This guy is in a totally different situation. He's free as a bird. He's travelling light. He doesn't have a care in the world and he, we don't see him out breaking his back doing any hard work at all. He's having a good time. And this is where, you know, I want to stress the, the, the word freedom to kind of latch onto that when we're making connections between these cards. Because the first thing I thought of when I saw the two cards together was this sense of freedom and this lack of freedom. But we look more and the freedom is, is seen in different ways. And we look more into that as we go along. But let's look at the Fool. It's a zero card. It's the first card of the Major Arcana and um, it is a void it's um nothing has really started yet it's uh the the, the birth of energy it's uh before it has been restrained or curtailed in any way it's free to do what it wants it hasn't yet been chained or bound or channeled into a certain direction so at the moment it's, it's free to come and go as it wishes it suggests potential spontaneity it's it's taking chances in life it's going with the flow it's um jumping off the side of the cliff and trusting that life will, will, will support you um taking a chance believing in life but it's a great card and uh, where i'm zooming in on this is um in a strong sense is a sense of freedom it's the card as well for forget vacation for travel for going and you know packing up your rucksack and heading off around the world without a care in the world getting get, getting away from all the the grind and all the pressures of everyday life uh and now it's he's in an envy situation and we have this dog down here is often his his inner inner ch chatter or external chatter or somebody trying to advise him or somebody trying to talk him out of the situation uh this dog could be encouraging go for go for it you know you, you know you're great i wish i could do what you're doing um isn't it wonderful to have a bit of free time or the dog could be saying to him uh isn't it well for you i'd stay here and work or um you know you're you're drifting along you need to settle down in life and start you know making something of yourself you can't just you know float around for the rest of your days you know if so that it could be encouraging them or just discouraging them um but there's this wonderful sense of potential and a new lease of life and new things happening without the, all the burdens that pre in preceded the journey and the sun is shining in the background and he's he's setting off on an, on an adventure so when we put these two cards down together um poor old guy in the seven of pentacles um he looks far from being on an adventure um when when we compare him to the fool he's been working very hard all this time and but we we see him stopped now and maybe he's dwelling on the fact that every you know how his life has been so curtailed and restricted and he's a slave to his work, a slave to his job, a slave to the system. He may have, you know, a lifestyle that he has to maintain, 
expensive car, expensive house, uh, bills to pay. Um, and, you know, he might say, oh, it's well for this guy here, uh, but I have responsibilities. So the Seven of Pentacles would have responsibilities. So, but we see him possibly um, envious of those who can take the weekend off or those who can, um, you know, drop everything at a moment's notice, those who don't have massive responsibilities and commitments in life. They can just go, you know, his, his life, and even look at the colour between the two cards, his this kind of greyed out in the background. Now, don't get me wrong, this guy loves what he does, but maybe for this moment in time, he's tired, he's exhausted, and I he's thinking of, oh, what I wouldn't give for a break. Wouldn't it be great now to be lying on a beach somewhere, uh, you know, soaking sun, traveling around with a backpack on me, getting to see the world. Wouldn't it be great? But uh, that's not for me at the moment. I'm stuck here doing all this work. It could be you're, you're in your job and you're doing your overtime and you know that the, you know, all, all the rest of your work colleagues are going off to a party or a, a festival or uh, a barbecue that's on, but you, you, you can't go because you're not free to go. So he might be dwelling on all these different things. Now we also must look at um, the Seven of Pentacles is often connected to the retirement card and, and especially the, when we, that kind of, uh, it's nearing retirement, the Nine of Pentacles would be the retirement card when you can hang up your work clothes and uh, you know enjoy your pension or whatever else you've got the freedom and the leisure at that stage um to to enjoy everything and, and the pentacles type would be the ones who've created you know made sure they have a decent pension and savings behind them they want to kind of enjoy their retirement and um, so the seven of pentacles is often because it's um nearing harvest time but you're not just there yet uh it, it could be suggesting that you're nearing retirement and this guy here might be thinking of all the things he's going to do when he does, when he's free to actually have a good time when all his work is behind him. He might also be looking at, this might be his pension building. And um, he's, he's saying, you know, looking at how will I manage? Will I be able to manage on this pentacle every every week? Uh, what will it buy me? Will, it, will I be able to travel? He may be thinking about all the things he wants to do when he retires. So his work is, is nearly done. Uh, he has you know, a decent savings behind him. So um, he's happy enough to keep going and doing what he's doing. But already there's the, the energy of the fool is entering into his life because he now actually sees it in sight when we're in the Seven of Pentacles. It's not that far away. So he knows he's kind of he can go then and go to the zero where there's nothing pressing on his mind. There's nothing pressing on his time. He can come and go as he pleases. He's beholding to nobody. You know, he doesn't have to clock in anywhere else. And he's wondering to himself, how will I manage that? He's even wondering, what will I do? How will I cope when I actually don't have to work anymore? When those days are gone. You know, will I be able to take the advice on board of the fool or will I, you know, will I worry about dipping into these funds I have? Um, so because the pentacles may need a little bit of convincing to, you know, letting loose some of this money. Now, they do like to enjoy life and the quality of life. And, you know, they, they will accept and understand that they might, you know, they might be in their 60s before they can have enjoyed the freedom that the fool um, promises them. Um, but uh, as well as the pentacles, if they're clever, they're very, very clever at money and investing and their pensions and everything. So they're the ones who will be able to retire early as well because they've been savvy with their monies and their savings. So we could have somebody who's retiring much earlier than the rest of us would be retiring because they've been putting money away from the very beginning, you know, typical pentacles behavior. So we have that sort of situation coming in as well. Now, let's look at this from the point of view as well. This is a guy in work, and um, this is a project he's working on, and he's doing his part of the project, and he's it's beginning to take shape now. He's They're coming into the final run with all the things that have to be done. So. He can take, a, he can sit back a little bit 
the hard work is done. He doesn't have to push as much. There's just the, the little details that have to be attended to. And once that's done, he's free. Now, we're not saying he's free to go off on a holiday. He might, after often people when they work on an intensive project for a long period of time, will take that break. Even actors, musicians, when they're recording albums, actors when they're making movies, you know, it's on set at three o'clock in the morning, late night, you know, musicians recording, working hard. And once they know that project is over, they will take a little break. It doesn't have to be a holiday or anything like that. It's just they don't have to be somewhere at a certain time and pressure on them. But it's also once he's finished this project, he may already be thinking about moving on to his next one. Because this is the, the void, the fool gives you the void where before something new happens. It's that kind of gap, uh, kind of a nothingness. Um, so before, you know, things end, things are completed, his project may complete it. But there's this little gap before the next thing because you generally don't stop, you know, finish your project and then the next second pick up the next one there is an interim period involved. So he might already be contemplating and we've got this out of the way. Now we can take a bit of a breath and prepare ourselves to go in. And also when there's when you've worked on a project for a long period of time, it can become tedious. I mean, I often say about, um, you know, when you start painting your house and your painting room and you get so tired painting the same color all the time that when you move to the next room, if you're using a different color, there's a sense of uh, oh excitement again, you know, there's some interest in it. So when the a project or, you know, whatever you're working on is coming to the end, um, it can say, would this ever end? I'm sick and tired looking at it. Uh, but when you start moving on to the next one, there's a new release of energy um, that so there's an interest again and there's a sense of I can't wait to get stuck into a new project so that my energy levels rise and I'm not jaded working on it it's new and it's um, interesting and it's taken me in another direction altogether so there is a sense of looking forward to anticipating a new adventure a new venture a new project a new a new job um, a new a new um, kind of stage of life so you know if he's, if he's looking at retirement as well he's he's looking forward to this he's not he's not the type of saying oh I, I can't what I'm going to be bored what am I going to do he has plans or just maybe with the fool as well, he's just, I, I don't want to make any plans. You know, we could this year, I don't want, you know, I know my, my partner retired and when he was coming up to retirement, everybody's asking him, what are you going to do? Have you got plans made for your retire? And he said, do you know what he said? I just want to sit down in one place. I don't want to have an agenda or a plan. I just want to do nothing. If I want to sit reading a book all day, I'll read a book. Or if I want to go out walking, go out walking. But there's always a pressure to have a plan, to have you know people to be working on something all the time. And this guy has done it all his life, or else he's been working diligently on something. And maybe he doesn't want a plan. Maybe he just wants to be footloose and fancy free. Saying that, the pentacles will eventually have to do something. They're not the type who will sit back and do nothing and rest on their, their money. They, you know, they could take up a hobby. Uh, generally, they'll do something that is productive and industrious, even if it is part of their retirement. They can take, you know, they can take up a hobby. They can even start a small business from home. So we, this is a, a lovely energy coming in of, you know, the, the hard grind and then the promise of what is to come. So we see if we can find any other connections with those. I'm just thinking, if we reverse this Seven of Pentacles here, I spoke to you earlier about, you know, there's a risk with the Seven of Pentacles of kind of getting impatient at the last final stretch and um, doing something, you know, risky or taking a chance on something. So we, we look at the Seven of Pentacles reverse. What if this guy here really can't be bothered? You know, he's fed up. He says, I can't. I just actually can't do another day of what I'm doing. Um, I'm due to retire, let's say, in another year's time or two years' time. I've just had enough. I'm, I'm tired of it all. I'm going to take early retirement and get out. Now, it might mean that I have less put away than um, I, I would have, or my pension won't be as sufficient, but I've just come to the end of the line. I don't want to do any more. This, uh, this draw is, has become overly strong. 
He just wants to be free. He can't bear it any longer. And, you know, I might be saying to people who are talking, trying to talk about, are you mad? You're only a couple of years away from having your full pension. And he says, oh, um, you can have it. You know, I, I'm, I, live, I live on, you know, a small, I'll be able to manage, I'll be able to cope. Uh, I just don't want to keep going. Now, it can work out for him, because, but he's taking a chance. He's take, stepping off that cliff and you say, could he not have waited a little bit longer? And he might be saying to the dog here, all those, you know, people are trying to warn him against it. I could be dead next year. I want to have, I want to live now. I, I'm, I don't really want to wait as, as long as I, I'm, I'm supposed to. I want to get out now. There's things I want to do before, you know, I could be sick, I could be ill, anything. And he's, he will be, he'll use kind of, kind of way out explanations and um, the people might think he's crazy. Now, in saying that, um, he might be making the best decision of his life. Um, and, you know, just going against convention and tradition and what's expected from breaking that. But he also might be taking a big gamble. If he just had kept his head down and kept going, his, he'd reap better rewards. Maybe his, his pension, when he discovers what he gets because of early retirement, he may find that he doesn't have enough to live on. He doesn't have enough to last. And he may regret um, pulling out. So... It, when the Seven of Pentacles reverses, the, it was all the advisable to get go and get professional advice. If you're thinking of making a, a move on something that you've put an awful lot of hard work and effort into and financial investment into, don't just act on the spur of the moment. Don't take that chancy risk. Go and make sure you know what you're doing, that you have the professional advice before you take that step because this might just be a passing phase you're going through you might just you know we all go to that and oh i can't stand what i'm doing I'm, I'm i'm fed up need to get away need a break um and then we pass through it and it all comes good again we also this guy as well in the reverse seven of pentacles we might be seeing this guy is that he's really loved to go on holiday have a break have a bit of an adventure but he can't work commitments have him tied in it could be his own business or as his job but he can't go. He would love to, but he can't. But also, if he's a workaholic, which the, the Seven of Pentacles often refers to a workaholic, um, he may be resisting, no, I won't work. Um, I, 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 I won't go on holiday. We could have this reversed, guys, as I said, no, I'm not taking that, you know, only fools take time off like that. That would be a silly thing for me to do. So he pushes on, you know, regardlessly, and he, he just grinds himself into the ground. He might be saying to himself, next year or next month, moving it forward all the time, so that he doesn't actually have to make a decision. He just needs to lighten up a little bit to, to let go because, you know, it's, he's become too serious, too entrenched in himself. And what is it all going to be for? You know, it's, he can't take his money with him, so he should be enjoying himself a little bit more uh, while he can. Now, if we were to reverse this fool again, it may be this guy has accumulated a lot of money. We put him upright. He's accumulated a lot of money and he's saying, no, really, I need this money to be earning me um, and, you know, getting a better return on it than where I have it at the moment. Um, that I'm only getting a small return on it. So he might... Um, he might go and get advice from somebody or somebody's approached him and saying, you know, I could make your money work much better for you. Uh, how much are you getting on return? Well, I could double that for you. And he's looking at the, the man and saying, hmm, so it's tempting. It's tempting to kind of say, oh, because the pentacles would be kind of keen to double their money. Because it's a seven of pentacles, there is a risk that you might do something against your, you know, your better judgment. Uh, because of a slight little, you know, the glitch and the patience that the patient, the pentacles normally have fantastic patience. But when um, in the seven of pentacles, there's a chance that that patience is wearing thin. So we have maybe him thinking, I, my money would do better for me elsewhere. When the fool reversed beside it, if there was a query thing, he's saying, oh gosh, you want to be very, very careful. Because I think that may not be a wise move for you. Your money may be better off where it is. You're taking a big risk, a big gamble. Who is giving you this advice? Go and get a second opinion, a third opinion, a fourth opinion, because you could stand to lose everything. You could head for a fall. 
when the fool reverses, there's this sense of doing something really foolish, taking a gamble, taking a risk, and that is not what the pentacles are normally like. But we could find it happening when we see the fool reverse. So the alarm bells would go off immediately in that case. I think that's an interesting combination. So again, it depends what cards are falling around that, that we begin to see the storyline open up. Um, we might see where this guy is getting his advice from. Uh, if we found a, a, a reverse magician maybe around, we would say, oh, this guy is, is somebody is, is going to squint on that. Somebody's given poor advice, but whoever it is, is extremely convincing. Um, and he's going to do this money, man out of his money, or maybe not even do him out of his money, but he's going to encourage him to invest in something where he's going to lose everything. Because, you know, with the, the fool, when you fall off that cliff, he's not going to bounce. So this, this is a very kind of delicate situation, and you'd want to be exercising extreme caution. So that's it. Um, and um, if you like this video, uh, please subscribe. And uh, if you want to have a, a notification of any upcoming videos, don't forget to click the bell button as well and um, share it to anybody who might think you, who you might think might find it interesting and get some use out of it. And I will be back with more of these videos where we're focusing on the two cards. And I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you back here next time.